In this video, I'm going to talk about why we as human beings become selfish during times of panic, crisis, natural disaster, virus, anything going around. Sit tight, we'll get into it right now. Welcome back to another video. I'm Jen. I'm gonna talk about something that's been recently going around in the news. I'm sure everybody has heard of the coronavirus by now. It's every media outlet out there. All your friends are talking about it. Everybody on Facebook, as you scroll through, everybody's talking about this thing, okay? The other thing they're talking about is how, or they're posting pictures about how stores, or the shelves are completely empty of like, toilet paper and uh, food, you know, and just water for some reason, bottled water and hand sanitizer, you know, all these things, the shelves are empty and people are have to go online to buy, to pay like $100 for like a thing of hand sanitizer or something really ridiculous. Why do we as human beings do this? We've seen it all happen between the snowstorms or other kind of natural disasters and things like that. Why are we so fearful as human beings? We are so fearful as human beings because of our natural, what's ingrained in us, our natural instinct. But what are we really scared of? when it comes down to it. Are we really scared that we're gonna run out of toilet paper? I mean, back in the day, people survived without toilet paper. And we're like, oh my God, you know, it, it, it goes deeper, obviously, than not having toilet paper or uh, not being able, well, not being able to wash your hands. That's a little more legitimate, but not having toilet paper or bottled water for some reason, it's not like we're gonna run out of, out of uh, you know, water, but um, people freak out people freak out and there's this mode of panic that goes around. So we, we do, we have our natural defensive mechanisms and you know, back in the day in ancient times, this was used for survival. This was to run away from an animal. That was, that was what, what was going to um, uh, attack us or you know, we had to forage for food and things like that. Now it's transferred over to not wild animals go coming to attack us, but other things in our lives. So nothing has changed in humankind. It's just the world around us, their external environment has changed, right? And, and you know, we no longer have to worry about a wild animal attacking us or us having to go about for food. But in a sense, we do because we're competing with other human beings now. So you see how it just kind of like transfers to something different. It evolves to something different. Um, so, you know, as you probably know, we have our fight or flight mode. So this, this is from our sympathetic nervous system. So when we are trying to survive in a sense, we, um, our body goes through, uh, this state where it, it either wants to fight back or run away. So you're either fighting the animal or you're running away from the animal. So you're either fighting against the virus or the catastrophe or the negative event that, that's coming into your world, or you're, you're trying to escape it, you're running away from it. Um, so, you know, our, our bodies respond in this way. This is our body's natural uh, response to stress. Okay, so we go through also a heightened state of emotion. And usually the heightened state of emotion is a negative one. See, things like uh, happiness and joy are not going to help us defend ourselves. Back in the day, we needed fear and, and rage and, and anger, all these, these emotions to help us survive, you know, and we'll survive against the wild animal that's trying to eat us or, or something like that. Um, so now we have the same type of negative emotions that are now intensified, they're heightened, okay? And, and this is usually fear, worry, anxiety, panic, it gets to a point. Because again, positive emotions aren't gonna help us survive, okay? They're not going to, uh, in this sense, in the, in the sense of fight or flight mode in our body, uh, naturally trying to um, protect ourselves, okay? We're trying to survive, we're trying to not die. So when it comes down to it, what are we really scared of? We're really scared of, again, not 
dying. Either we run out of food or we, uh, this animal or this virus attacks us and eats us. So, uh, you know, we have the, the, it's ingrained in us. It's ingrained in us. So we go into panic mode and, you know, what, what media outlets and news, they feed off of this intensified emotion, this fear, you know, fear mongering and stuff like that. So, you know, we can be aware of a situation. We could be cautious. We can do all the things that we need to do to keep ourselves safe. But the moment we panic, the moment we go out and we hoard things from, uh, you know, preventing other people from having toilet paper or hand soap, uh, it is the moment where, um, you know, things start to get out of control. And we become selfish in a sense as human beings because we're just trying to survive ourselves. So you'll notice, um, like I said, people go to, they stockpile bottled water, or toilet paper, and then other people can't have this stuff. They can't, um, they can't access, you know, simple soaps and things like that because you have some people who are in such a, a negative vibrational state for themselves, a negative emotional state that they they go into panic mode survival mode fight or flight mode where anybody outside of them it doesn't matter if those people survive it doesn't matter if they get sick or whatever they're just focused on themselves and their own survival so you see how this transfers over um, and it's also the scarcity mindset so we always think that um, that stuff is going to run out so we want to gather as much as we can because again we have this lack this fear mentality that uh that is always making us panic in in negative situations like this but the thing is if you're in that state of that panic and you're allowing that fear what fear does it takes over your entire body and if the fear takes over your entire body you're expending so much energy rather than using it for other more productive things or to help other people or uh, embrace your life actually, that, um, that you become almost like, like stuck in a sense where you can't move, you can't do anything and uh, you panic so much that, that this fear state takes over your whole being. And what it does, it brings you closer to it. It actually heightens uh, the, the emotion even more, the negative emotion even more. So if you start off in a state of fear and you really intensify that emotion and you keep focusing on that fear, on that fear, on that fear, it keeps intensifying. It's almost like a, a the momentum, a spiral, and it keeps going down and down and down and down. So you have more fear and more anxiety and more fear and more anxiety. And you keep focusing on it and focusing on it and focusing on it. And it keeps intensifying. You keep adding fuel to the fire in a sense, because your thoughts, you're, you're expending so much energy into that. It almost like an entity that is taking over and controlling you in a sense because you're no longer you're no longer present because you're focused you keep letting the momentum kind of drag you down into that negative uh that negative state and it's intensifying and intensifying and intensifying so in a sense the more you intensify that negative emotion the closer the negative event is going to come to you you're actually bringing it to you and I know uh, people will, will say, well, you, you can't just ignore it. I'm not saying to ignore it. I'm saying you can be aware, you can be present to what you're doing. But the more you focus on this fear, this entity that takes over your entire body, is the more you will bring, you will find things in your environment to confirm that negative situation for you. You know, you, and then the other thing you start envisioning in your mind you start actually putting yourself in that worst case scenario. You start envisioning yourself uh, feeling like you have a fever, or you start envisioning yourself feeling kind of like body aches and chills, or you're envisioning yourself actually being in that uh, sick state or, or going through that disaster or that catastrophe. And, um, and again, you bring it closer to you because now you're actually living in it. You're not yet living in it in the, the physical sense or your physical reality yet, but you're living in it in your head. 
in a so so you're you're actually looking for it in a sense and and you're tr you will you will absolutely find things in your environment to confirm that you'll find you'll start noticing more people sneezing or coughing around you and um and then again you'll intensify the fear the emotion the anxiety and again bringing it closer and closer to you so um you know this is just the gist of of how we um, get into like a panic mode if we're not careful, if we keep focusing on it and not being present, you know, we, we need to do all the things we need to do. We need to wash our hands. We need to uh, be aware of what's going on, but we don't need to focus so much on it that it overtakes our ability to function and, and keep sucking us in where we keep envisioning that we already have this, this thing, you know? So it's about being realistic and looking at statistics and, and, um, and not being in a panic mode and not hoarding tons of, of goods because you think the apocalypse is going to happen or something like that. We always go from, from to the extreme. So that is just our normal mechanism at work our instinct. So with that being said, stay safe guys, and I will see you on tomorrow's video. Peace.